cardiac output can be imagined as a water park, with the heart serving as the central pump station. Its job is to pump water, or blood, through the pipes, which are the blood vessels, and to various attractions, representing systemic organs and tissues. Its goal is to ensure all visitors, who represent the body's cells, have a great time. In this water park, cardiac output is like the total volume of water pumped by the central station to meet the needs of its visitors. The pump's efficiency depends on two factors. One is the amount of water in each pump, which we call stroke volume. Think of stroke volume as the size of the pump's container used to move the water. The larger the container, the more water can be transported with each push. Two, the number of pumps per minute, or what we know as heart rate. This is essentially how many times per minute the pump's container empties. Now let's picture a scenario where the water park becomes crowded, symbolizing increased metabolic demands. The central pump station must work harder, maintaining a higher cardiac output to ensure enough water reaches all the attractions. But if the pump fails to meet the demand, the park's visitors, which again are our body's cells, may become disgruntled due to an inadequate water supply, mirroring poor perfusion. Several factors can affect cardiac output in a clinical context, such as the heart's contractility, preload, and afterload. Understanding these is like being the water park manager, who must monitor and adjust the pump's performance to maintain optimal flow, keeping the park running smoothly and the visitors happy. As healthcare professionals, we identify and resolve issues affecting cardiac output, ensuring that the heart pumps blood efficiently. By doing so, we help maintain a well-functioning water park, guaranteeing a fun time for all visitors, which is maintaining healthy organs and tissues.